11 o'clock on your Wednesday morning. Welcome in. It is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and Chris Clark along with you. We've been talking about it all morning. And, yes, indeed, it is time to talk to Don Staley, head coach of the Gamecock women's basketball team here on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Don, first of all, thank you so much for taking your time for us this morning. We know you're very busy. Coming off the undefeated national championship season, you were at Disney World. You are at the 76 playoff, the 76ers playoff game the other day, hanging out with Dr. Dr. J and Allen Iverson. You got a gift from Beyonce the other week. You're just living life big right now, aren't you? Uh, it's, it's a good time. I, w- I will say that. It's a really good time. Uh, you know, you often reflect on what I was doing last year at this time, and it was the complete opposite. So I'd rather have it this way and uh, exhaust myself celebrating than, than not. Coach, uh, <clears throat> hey, this is Wes. Appreciate you doing this so much. And um, mm-hmm. I-, I wanted to talk a little bit about your team and just the, the buy-in from-, from your girls as a whole, the fact that um, th- there seems to be a willingness within your group of players to give a little bit on the personal end for the better of the team, obviously, and that, that allowed you all to build depth and uh, obviously accomplish the ultimate goal this year. What What is it about this group, and, and how do you continue doing that moving forward now that the title – you know, is, is in the bag and you go for another one. What can you say about these girls and how they've just been able to uh, to make everything about the team? Uh, I mean, it, I mean, obviously it takes just, uh, just communicating with them, just, I mean, really directly um, and consistently. And you have to do it not only to them, you got to do it to their parents, you got to do it to their trainers. I mean, you have to do it to everybody that really has, um, or who plays an integral role in their lives. Because, you know, a lot of them only see them. A lot of their supporters only see them, and they only see their contributions. And they don't really worry. I mean, they do worry about other people if they're playing ahead of them or they think they're better than them. So you, you have to explain to them that um, what, what their, their personal standard is like their personal daily standard. And that's the only competition that you really need to be worried about is you. And if you play to your standard um, and everybody plays to their standard, then we got a big issue because I'll have a, I'll have an issue as to who I play when and where. But if you let yourself down, then you leave room for somebody else who's playing at their standard. You let them in on it. And it's, it's just that. It's, I know it sounds very simple, but it is simple when you when you explain yourself that way and when your players really have that buy-in. Like you, you have someone like a, you know, I'll say Sanaya Fagan, who I love to death. Like she is, I mean, she's the ultimate teammate, um, but she's also a young person that really understands when she hasn't lived up to her standard. And you see her, her playing time fluctuates. It didn't, it didn't, you know, once it reached the point probably midway through the season, she started just blocking everything out and just playing to her standard. And she played a, she played an impactful, integral role on our run to the championship. Like, I, I could count on her. Like, I could trust her. And she built that through practice. And then she built that through the playing time that she, she did get. And then she got extended playing time. And then she started one game. Like, it, it's it's not, it's not, I mean, I I only have my word. I only have my word with our players. And, and I, I try to stick to that as closely as, as possible. And if, if I don't, then I'm explaining why. So, I, I mean, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. I really am. Like, every coach doesn't have the luxury that we have. Does it, does it come with some – Heartache, yes. I mean, it's hard to not play somebody that's that's talented. But not so much if, you know, if they're missing class or if they're not communicating or if they're not playing to their standard, it comes easy. And they, they really understand that. Coach, when you look back on this season, you know, one of the things that struck me was, you know, you, you did obviously display your emotions after the game. And you addressed this, I think it was the first question in your post-game press conference after the national title game of, you know, just, just kind of discussing your emotions. And 
I think you mentioned how far that this team had come from, you know, game one to the final game, 38th game, winning the national title and the growth that you saw in this team. And I know it was all really, really new, you know, on the court after the game, talking Holly Road, press conference. Now that you've had some time to kind of decompress and look back on it, what does stand out to you about how much this team grew and, and just how they grew over the course of the year? Um, I mean, it was, you know, I, I, I do think at times basketball um, repays you. It, it, it does. If you're if you're in it for the for the right reasons, you'll you'll take some losses that you don't anticipate. You know, i.e. last year, um, and then you get some wins that you don't anticipate. And um, for for this team, I, I just when I reflect on where we started from, you know, in June, um, and then you take June, July. I mean, we we were afraid to allow them to go home because the, somehow the school, like our our schedule, is set up now that they get three weeks off in between the last summer session and when we start back in the fall. And it's never been that. It's been about ten days for the most part, but now it's it's three weeks. So everything that we built. And it, we had to build it from the ground up because they did not come in shape as a whole. And so I'm thinking we're going to have to start back over in August. And then they came in back in pretty decent shape. And then you don't really know how good you are because you're really so close to the situation. And we, we again, lucked up on having a really good highlighter, our male practice squad. So you really couldn't gauge how good we were until the first game. And then, then you didn't want to believe how good we were because what you have had been through since June. Um, and then I just thought Paris was the game in which our team, not necessarily our our coaches, I would just say the players, really found how good they could be. And then from from that game on, they just started holding each other accountable. Like their competitive spirit came out in a number of different ways and through a number of different players. Like Aslan, Aslan found her voice and and her leadership voice, but it, it came through just being competitive and not wanting to lose. And each and every person took a turn in in leading our group. The things that they said to each other, the accountability they held each other to. I mean, it was it was really beautiful, and because usually we have to do some some life skill stuff, and we we did do some of that. Like one of our one of our former players, Markeisha Grant, um, has a, a life skills business, so we wanted to give her some business while also just getting this team to to get together, you know, once a month. And it was nothing. It was nothing like dynamic. It was more like they did some like number painting and you know that's and they have fun like i think they're they're going to be bored with it and i'm just trying to give marquisha an opportunity to work with our team because you know she's done some great things in the community so we wanted to you know allow her to bless us with her skill work and and hopefully you know the team can get a little tighter with it and and with every session of hers with every game of ours um they just found a way to like each other, to love each other, and and it was it was organic. It happened just like like organic and that, and if there's nothing that you could take from that when chemistry is built from an organic place and a genuine place, you just really ride the wave as coaches. Coach Don Staley joining us here on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Coach, I want to kind of take a 10,000-foot view, view of the program now. You've been here since 2008, and when you came in here, the expectation was to win and have a lot of success. But three national championships later, um, you capping it off with an undefeated season this year. You sent countless women to the WNBA, and they've had tons of success in that realm either. Could you have even foreseen back in 2008 what you would eventually build this program into today? Um, no, I, I really, I really like my cup runneth over when it comes to the success that we've had. You know, although you, 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 you work for it, 
You know, you you really we we put in a lot of work for the type of success that that we've had, but everybody does. A lot of a lot of people work really hard, and they don't get one. We we um we're very fortunate to get three, and you you have to again reflect on the type of players, the type of parents, um, the type of fans, the type of administrators. Like you, we can't be as successful as as we've been without the help from from like all those entities because you you can you can you can actually as administrators you can do some things that will damper your your workplace and you can damper the spirit um of people who are in the workplace um you can have fans who you know think we are are um, I mean, they can they can pick apart our flaws. Um, they cannot like the makeup of our team and 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 not show us the love that they've given us. Um, I mean, we've had great players come and great players go, and although sometimes you know that that leads people to put a dark cloud over our program, but we've been able to survive it. And we've been able to survive it because ultimately I just want, and not just me, but our coaching staff, we just want young people to be successful. So everything we do is for their success. Sometimes that's believable. Sometimes it's not. But I think if you judge us off of our body of work, and that's what you have to judge someone off of, not one bad day, not one great day, but the body of work. And our body of work speaks to um, just really having good people and treating our players with the ultimate respect. And that's that's it. We've we've treated people well. Coach, um, you, you talked about sort of your players having to try to live up to their own personal standards. And uh, I, I want to talk real quickly about somebody in particular, Malaysia Fuwai. You've called her in the past a generational talent Um from my eyes, I mean, I don't know if there's a limit to her upside, but um, when you look at her kind of, I guess, personal standard, what what is the next step for Full Wiley as you challenge her going into this offseason? And uh, just how high is her upside as far as what she could be capable of, of doing when she puts it all together? You know, Malaysia is pretty smart, like, like truly. Like, she knows herself. Um, well, if you if, if we have to again reflect on her her freshman year, um, she had a short wick, meaning she could go about three times up and down, and she's done. Like it's over. She's trying, <laughs> but I think conditioning is a, a big part of um, what her next part of her journey is. Um, I, I do think she. And I try to tell Malaysia this all the time because she plays for for the highlights, you know, because she's very creative. Um, she's very gifted. She can do things that no other female that I've seen have ever done, um, female or male, for that for that sake. Um, but she plays to that. She plays to the crowd, and she wants to, you know, she wants to give them something exciting every time down. And so I'm, I'm trying to get her to play in between those moments because that's when most of the game is being played. It is. So once she's able to master what's in between those big, those highlighted plays, um, we'll create more highlights. We'll create more, like, like not just creative highlights, but fundamental basketball highlights. And that is that is beautiful basketball. Like it, it is. Like I, I thought she grew. Like she, if you ask her, you know, I always ask her, like, what were you thinking in this play? It could be a turnover. It could be a shot. Like one one time, she started off a game where she was just passing. She was just doing a great job at just making the defense forget about her. And then she took a probably a four shot, right? So, you know, you take a four shot, you're going to hear our, all of our coaches say, you know, make the extra pass. So she <laughs> she comes out of the game and 
she heard you. She heard us saying, you know, make the extra pass. And I asked her, what was she thinking? So she says, I have been passing the entire half. So the defense more than likely thought I was going to pass. So I thought it was best to take the shot. Hey, I mean, that makes sense to me. <laughs> that makes sense to me. I mean, so I was like, okay, that makes sense. Cool. It is that. Like, she, she, she understands what she's doing out there on the floor. And I think sometimes as a freshman, you know, you think she just isn't thinking about that, that she doesn't have that much depth about the game, which she really does. And, you know, for her, you know, and, and I, I'll give you guys, because try, I try to be as transparent as possible and not give up too much information about, you know, what they want to do personally. Like, I ask her, like, what – what do you want to do? Like, what what do you want to do? What are you what are your plans for next year? How what are some of the things that you want to get better at? And she said, she said, you know what? She said, when I came in, I just kind of just wanted to fit in and just get the information that I needed. So I didn't really, I didn't really challenge to be a starter. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so you gonna you gonna challenge to be a starter? She was like, "Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge myself, and I'm gonna challenge my teammates to be a starter. And that's that's pretty mature. I mean, that's the way. She actually, just if you look at how she came in, um, she was feeling things out, and now she's gonna take it to the next level. And once she does, she's gonna make us a better team. If she's a starter, that means she beats somebody out. Although every 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 year we start over. So although we you know we know that who we started last year, they should start again. They should start again this year if they don't get beat out. So I, I'm just looking forward to just everyone being more competitive. Everyone working on their games this this summer, so we could come in and just be more lean as a team and not just you know not just defend. We don't want to defend our our national championship trophy. Okay, we want to work towards getting another one. Like mm-hmm. I know that's going to be the narrative for us is the defending national champions, and that's cool because we are. But we can't rely on that that team and that experience to dictate how we how we operate in this space in a, in the upcoming season. Speaking of that season, Coach, uh, have you? I guess, and I don't know exactly what part of the, what time of the year this kind of all takes place, but have you been putting together all the pieces for the schedule next year? Any little hints you can give us on possible big names being added? How, how does all that work? Scheduling is really hard. It's really hard because people don't want to play us. They don't. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it. They don't like. I mean, and and. I mean, really good teams don't want to play us. And I just, I don't get it. I really don't get it because people don't realize that that it doesn't it doesn't hurt you to play us. It only helps you. We got we all have a great net to start the season. Um, it only helps you. Even if you lose, it helps you. So it's not it's not to say I want people to play us and think they're gonna lose because you shouldn't. Like I we play we play UConn. You know, we we kept playing UConn for the past, I don't know, ten years. I mean, for the first sixty percent of us playing, we we lost by thirty points. So by us continuing to play them, we figure some stuff out. You fig you figure it out. You figure out what you need to do in order to compete and win against who I thought was the best team in in the in the you know in this decade. You you have to just do it, and one game doesn't matter. But one game is is great for our game. Like I'm glad that the SEC is doing the SEC ACC challenge. Uh, we'll get a good game. We'll, we'll we'll get a great game that. That was very difficult for us to schedule um, throughout the year. Who who we play? We're gonna. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but we'll, we'll open the season in Vegas, playing a, an opponent that is fluctuating because because the, the opponent we were supposed to play is not gonna play us anymore for one reason <laughs> or another. 
So I mean, so it's hard mm. for us to say. We'll we'll play in Vegas though. I'll give I'll give our our listeners okay. that much. Okay. So so we'll we'll hopefully we'll get a big plane and take some fans and some some donors and make it a great trip for everybody. Um, hopefully you'll be responsible and not gamble away, you know, all your funds. But we'll, we'll go to Vegas. So where else will we go? We're, we're not even finished our schedule yet. Um, we got the ACC SEC challenge. I don't know who will play, but more than likely we'll play one of the top teams in the ACC. Um, UConn comes back to us again because we went to them twice um, prior to them coming to us this year. Um, we have to go to UCLA. So I think that's, you know, that'll be a big game for us. Um, I don't know. We'll probably have some more big ones, but, but we got to sign the contract. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Coach, we're certainly looking forward to the upcoming season, and obviously your, your crew is going to be favored in most, if not all, those games. Uh, before we let you go, allow us to be the first ones to wish you a very happy birthday coming up later on this week. Uh, any any special plans for the birthday this weekend? We we had special plans, which was a, an official visit, but they chose to oh. <laughs> they chose to commit somewhere else. So I thought I was going to give me a commitment on my birthday, but nope, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just gonna gonna chill and. And hopefully taking a Sixers game at home because when I go up to Philly, we don't win. So I'm going to keep my butt here and, and watch it from home. It was a really great game last night that I had a great feeling. I did. I sat here, and usually if they're if I think they're going to lose, I'll move away from the TV. <laughs> but I stayed glued to the TV because I'm thinking they stole game two from us. We got to steal game five from them. And we ended up winning. Tyrese Maxey did his thing, and it was it was an incredible day uh, for us Sixers fans. Well, hopefully the rest of the. But thank season. you, thank you for the birthday <laughs> wishes. Thank you, you. I, I do listen to you all, like when I'm driving into work, and I appreciate you covering women's basketball. I appreciate you covering our program and our team, like like it's a sport. Like I don't do a whole lot of uh, talk uh, talk radio, but I do listen to you all. And I do listen to you all probably a lot more than I, I normally do just because I know you cover you cover our, our program. So I really appreciate that. Well, we certainly appreciate you listening. And uh, it's truly an honor to get to cover your team and get to cover the best program in all of women's basketball. And we are certainly excited to see what the next season and seasons going forward have in store uh, with uh, what we hope is going to be many more national championships. Coach, thank you so much for taking a little bit of your time for us this morning. We know you're very, very busy. And we certainly always welcome you to come back on the airwaves with us. I'll be back, y'all. Appreciate awesome. y'all. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Appreciate you. Happy right. birthday. Coach Daly, yes. Thank you. Happy birthday once again. We'll uh we'll come back. We'll uh recap this conversation as the game comes.